on an amazing month-long tour of New Zealand and Australia. This is his new book entitled The Amazing World of Gretchen. Would you welcome The Amazing Gretchen? <laughs> How are you, amazing? That, you know, you're, you really start something. I can't go on an airline. Everybody says, be amazing. How are you? Absolutely. Of course. What are we going to do tonight? Feels, what do you want to talk about? It feels like, uh, just looking at the top of the show, uh, for all the animals, and I'm, I guess I react the way some people do to snakes. There's no rationale as to why uh, I... Just a learned thing. It you're, really you're not born with a fear of snakes or something like that. That's instilled in you when you're a youngster because you hear it from somebody. And yet, Sean, you could, uh, to show you how a phobia can uh, last, you can hear all the reasoning against it. You know, right. there's no reason to be afraid of this, but it still happens. It's an emotional thing. But I'm looking at the, uh, the commercial, I guess the Toyota one had ESP, and on the one, then you mentioned the Exorcist, and it's kind of, ref I feel at home on the show. The Exorcist I saw uh, last week, you had seen it yeah. some time back, and I think you liked it. It's a... Uh, that's the way you, I react to it. You know? Yeah, it's a strange picture. You come away with at least an opinion. It's not a bland evening. I like gothic horror stories, and I think it's a horror story in the classical sense of the word. Uh, it's prob that's probably the only kind of uh, theater that's left, uh, John, in which mm. the good wins over evil, because there isn't too much in American movie making where you really know the good and the bad at the end, and uh, you know, one has uh, showed its superiority. But it's funny. Three and a half years ago, four years ago, I'm, I travel all over the world, and uh, I've been called in by a number of law enforcement agencies in the Dallas and Houston area. I'm thinking, I'm certainly, I've never been involved in crimes. I don't solve crimes. I'm not a, you know, one of these psychometrists who hold objects and describe people that were at the scene of the crime. In most of those incidents, as I talk about in the book, yeah. you never hear how well they did. They didn't do too well in retrospect, but of course the headlines is the psychic came into town and tried to help out. But they were asking me about a phenomena which really is a throwback to about 300 years ago. In parts of Texas, outside of Houston and outside of Dallas, you now have, and had three years ago, what are called covens. And covens are, you know, an offshoot of witchcraft where groups right. of people are massed together and hold the, the black mass or uh, so-called seances. And what's, interest, what's interesting about them is that most of them were attended by teenagers. Now, I hadn't read The Exorcist then, but I can think of one press conference I had which we decided should not have been reported because it preceded the movie by a couple of years. And they were describing the way people responded at these coven, these, uh, yeah. these uh, witchcraft uh, sessions, these black masses. And there were quite a number who would lie on the ground. Anyone who sees the movie know what we're talking about. And the middle of their body would arch up and bounce up and down while the head and the legs remained on the ground. Almost as if they were, quote, levitating. They really weren't. Right. They were in kind of spasms. And supposedly, they were told by the leader that they were possessed by the devil. But what's interesting, and this is my point regarding this movement in exorcism today, because uh, some priests are reporting 30 exorcisms a, a month, which yeah. uh, years ago was rare. This same phenomena took place, John, in the 1880s and the 1890s, when a psychiatrist by the name of Charcot was treating mentally ill people in a hospital in Paris. They didn't claim they were possessed by the devil. Yeah. They were strictly psychotic or had some kind of psychoneurotic manifestations and felt that they were being possessed by an idea. So I think all this phenomena depends on the climate. What's accept accepted now well, for a lot of people is exorcism. A, one kicks off another very quickly. And you can't blame the movie for it. But at the same time, what's really sad is, and I know I'm going to be criticized for it because some people have, uh, regarding these groups have condemned me heavily the past few months. What's very sad about the whole thing is that the groups that are getting together, which is a lot of youth involved, and that's fine. If it's fun, that's one thing. But they're guided by people who are much, much older. And I think for some of these people, yeah. it satisfies them and gives them a messiah complex. Yeah. And if anyone criticizes them, as I have, they immediately say tomorrow, well, Kreskin's in league with something else that's evil, which is what we're trying to fight by releasing it in you. I think you're in league with something, Kreskin. No, no way, John. But I'm going to show something. What are you going to do over here? John? Our object's going to move and... Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, we're not going to have any levitation, John, but it's a direct offshoot of this, except that I'm not going to say right now that anyone is possessed by anything, or in 1916, when the Ouija board became You've popular. heard the joke, haven't you? What happens if you don't pay your exorcist? You get repossessed? <laughs> Sorry. It's going, it's going around. Can I, so I thought I'd throw it can I use that in my, in you my can class? Use, you can I use better that. not, John. <laughs> John, what I'd like to do is I tested a number of people about a few minutes before the program for about five minutes. We had about a dozen 
I want to narrow it down to six people, and I'm going to ask them to kind of come forward yeah. and join us. Would you come over here sure. and join me, John? Sure. It's over here. All right. These are not plants or anything. No, these are, uh, no way. No way. Oh, they're you people I out. don't know. I, in fact, the reason I spent the five minutes... Come on forward, for, folks. Would you join us? A glass of white wine for me. <laughs> <laughs> and because of table space... Hello there. I'm going to have... Would you form in, the, in partners, please, mm -hmm. opposite each other at the table? Wanna there were a few partner? more people. There, were, sure. there was another couple. Would they come down? Yeah, they I don't think they... Come on down and stand opposite each other at the table. What do we just have? Just the back. ones we originally we ended up with at the very end. Now, would you form partners? I don't know whom you found you worked with. John, come on over All here. Right. The, uh, the old idea of the Ouija board was that it was a wooden piece you know, on a board. Well, that's right. a commercial thing. In, in France, for centuries, they did it with a glass and a goblet. Now, one last thing, and I think John was wise to bring it up. We don't know each other, folks, in no. any way. I, no. I met you five minutes before the show, and I haven't asked you to play along. No. That's no. one thing important. All right, here are the glasses standing. Now well, they're already reacting, John. <laughs> now, in the movie *The Uninvited*, we had the in which Ruth Hussey and Ray Milland and so forth were involved. They put the first finger of their dominant hand on the glass. Would each of you do that? It'll take maybe in the beginning about eight, nine seconds. Don't move the glass deliberately in any way. You know, you're smiling. You tell me what's happening. It's jumping around. Mm. And you're not doing this deliberately, are you? No, no. You give me your word of honor that you're not no, doing it deliberately. As a, John, you can ask them anything you want. As it gets near the edge, all I can ask you to do is take your fingers off or you're going to have a crash. You take your finger off, please. Are you sure you ladies are not pushing that? Not at all. No, we're you're not just touching it. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Do, do, do it again. Put your finger on. No, don't, try to, don't try to move it. You're don't just... try in any way. Would you tell John exactly what you feel happening? Have your finger touching it, though. Don't keep moving your finger off it. Because you get a better reaction. What do you feel happening? It's just like the table's moving, the glass is just moving by itself. John, look at in this case, their fingertip is hardly touching it at all. How does it feel when it, take your how does it feel when it starts to move? Like it's going like this. It's jumping up. No, what are they doing? Are they subconsciously? It's moving an unconscious it? nervous reaction. But let me point out something. Take your fingers off. This time, now you would insist you're not moving it, right? No, no way. This time when you put your fingers on, make up your mind. Make up your mind. The glasses are not going to move. Put your fingers on it. <laughs> Tell me. You're not doing this deliberately, no, are you? No, no. Tell me how this feels. Weird. Very weird. What did you say, ma'am? Not doing, you're not doing anything. It's just going by itself. Yeah. It seems to be going. And yet it's an unconscious. One more thing. Move it to the center. This time, folks. I want you to put your finger on, and so you can't stop it. It's obvious no matter what you do, you can't Why stop it. think that way? I want you now to try to control it and slow it down when it reacts. Watch the opposite reaction. Keep your fingers on no matter where the glass goes. Don't take your fingers off ever. Try to stop it, and, if, and instead it's going to be a reverse reaction. Keep your fingers on as long as the glass is on the table. And, John, you're going to, if you... It's going harder. Yes, stay with it. Stay with it. Okay. It'll have, that's all right. That's it. Stay with it. Is that wild? Is that wild? <laughs> it really happens. Stay with it. It'll fall off the table, and I want to prove that it will. Stay with it as, lo as long as you can until it finally goes, and it, don't even try to stop it. And you're not doing that in any way whatsoever, are you? Isn't that interesting? Well, somebody's moving that. No, it's no. Consciously, I don't want you to, I don't want you to catch it this time. Put your fingers on it. I don't want you to catch it. Put your fingers on it. And then, John, once one, once one of them topples, then I'm going to take uh, maybe t one couple, yeah, because yeah. time is going. Stay with it as long as you can. Don't use any other hands. And you're not doing that deliberately, are you? Uh, <laughs> All right. Obviously, you're not. Now, let me ask the two of you right here to join me. I'll ask the other four of you to return to your seats, maybe step forward. John, can we have the two of us bring one glass with you? Can we break through the second? All right. We did break, John. Yeah, here we are. Oh, all right. Could you stay right uh, we're here? We're going to take a break here first, and then we're going to come right back, and you're going to... All right. We'll continue fine. with this, okay? Yeah, you're sitting over here. You're right back. Here we can. Okay. okay. Well, we got about four and a half minutes all here. All right, John, I, uh, I have an envelope in which there are four of those jumbo kind of novelty playing cards, right. which you don't know, and I haven't told no. you folks what the cards are. There are four playing cards in here? Yeah, but they're large ones. Now, these are miniatures. If I can maybe... Sh I don't... I'll just turn this we'll over. We'll get a camera over here. All right. Now, they're, they're all different, and if you folks notice, they're all around the rim mm -hmm. of a board that I've had designed. It's right. a slippery surface, a non-commercial. And place your knees together and just let lay this... rest this in this way. Now, John does not know, and you folks don't know the cards that are in that envelope. We're going to take advantage of your ability to navigate this unconsciously without thinking. All I can tell you is this, of the four cards, one card is on this side, one is on this side of the row, one is on this side, and one here. 
I'm going to try to cause you people to find the cards by that glass touching a card on this row which corresponds to this mm -hmm. and so forth. Place your finger on it. Try not to reason. All right. No, whatever we'll card. wait. Whatever one it touches first. As soon as that glass moves, it's going to go to one side and one of the four sides. As soon as it touches, we'll take the card immediately. As soon as it touches, don't try to stop the glass from moving. It'll slide from either to any of the sides. And as soon as it touches one of the sides, we're going to we're, keep your finger on. As soon as it touches one of the sides. Now, I'm going to pull out. We don't have much time, so we're going to have to almost go. Uh, you're going to have to you tell me, John. Touch. I think it touched that one there. Right. As you move the glass to the middle, put your fingers on. We have three other sides. I'll just set this on the stand here. John, if I may, All right. we can put it in about like that. All right. As soon as it touches, in fact, it should go much far faster the last three times. Don't even think about it. Just let it be pulled to whatever direction it's going in. And we see that it don't, don't look at her. Just let the, let the glass go. It'll go very, very rapidly. Okay. Now, I think, John, would you judge it to be this one here? Right. Put your finger on again, please. Maybe we can get to all four cards. I don't know. John, how's our time doing? How are we doing? We've got the two short... Look, that's going rather rapidly. Right. We've got the two short edges. I haven't told them anything regarding this. He's hardly touching it at all. You'll have to judge because the glass is large. Which one? But I think it's the extreme. It pushed it out. Put your finger on again. And we now have one edge in which there are three cards. I'll turn my back. It should start to move. Towards the other edge, it's going to touch one of those cards. As soon as it does, John, let me know. I can't even say anything to them that would guide them suggestion-wise because my back is two. No, Which this. one is it? No, oh, I'm, I don't even want to uh, suggest it. I thought it had already gone. It's about to touch this one here. Now, time being as it is, let me just turn this over and show these. I'm, sure, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Show these as they are. As a matter of fact, they are in a haphazard order. May we turn this to the camera, please, to save time? John, if we'll read off the cards, it is a queen of hearts. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds, ten, ten of spades, and a two of clubs. Queen of hearts, six diamonds, ten spades, and you six of clubs. These? Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Two of clubs. Two of clubs. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Queen of hearts. That's the last would be. And the ten, ten of spades. spades, it is. Uh -huh. Thank you. That's amazing. Uh, amazing. Someday, John, I will be more amazed, even more amazed than how the time flies on you. Yeah. Thank you. That program. was very interesting, both those experiments. We'll take a break. We are back. David says, well, he wants to know how you do that. Very well. Hmm? <laughs> there you are. No, a suggestion was basically involved, and yet there was nobody in a trance, no altered state. But the uh, person could misread that if they all they had would have to do was sprinkle 26 letters on a, on a table and start fooling around with the glass. And if it started spelling out things, there are people who, because of certain needs, would misread it and start guarding their lives. And that's a tragedy. I have no because idea what you're talking about. In other, words, <laughs> in other words, that glass, that glass could have spelled out words if there were words around the, t the uh, uh, board instead of cards. Words instead of cards. You ever use an Ouija board? Yeah, I've, yeah. Yeah, well, people move that But I'm convinced the other also. person's moving it. Yeah. Even though I know I'm not, I keep thinking the other person, you know... Well, unconsciously, there is reactions, but the, as you work... There's a, there's a person who had a bestseller in the 20s by the name of uh, Curran, and she wrote under a pseudonym, Patience Worth. All the books she wrote that were bestsellers, three or four, were written with Ouija board. She had no literary background. Why she she type must it? have... Type it? Wouldn't have been easier to type well, it? Well... <laughs> Never mind that. I thank you for being with us again. Amazing. And David, thank you. Tomorrow night we have Michael Landon, Rex Reed will be with us, Bill Withers, and Suzanne Summers. Thank you. Good night.